Hi, I'm Sean Smith. That makes this Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and the occasional travel photo in On One Photo Raw. So today I'm going to uh, take a look at the UX updates yet again. Uh, and I'm going to directly compare On One 2024 to On One 2023. So what I have open right now is On One 2024. And one of the things that I don't like is that there's no uh, labels here. But this, there's an easy fix for this. Now, the first issue here is that, you know, I hover over it. I, there's no tooltips. What if I don't know what this icon does? I have to click to find out or I can go into window and show bumper labels. Now it's now it's there and I can see it. But if I go into on one 2023 and I've got the bumper labels turned off, I get the tooltips. So this is better. Maybe you want to uh, save screen real estate, screen real estate. And if you don't remember what the icon does, when you hover over it, it gives you the information. Okay, this is the layers icon. And it's the same thing over here on the left. If I hover over here, I open the desktop, default browser location. But in On One 2024, I don't get any tooltips. Although over here, this is does have text by default. But okay, now I've, I've got, it's inconsistent. See, tooltips are, are on these ones, but they're not on these ones. I have to turn on the labels. So that's one thing that I'm not really keen on. The other is that the simple search or simple filters were removed from the bottom here. Now in 2023, uh, where is it? You got in the center of the photo, you've got the simple filters and I can update whatever and it will automatically update the film strip view. Great, now it's two stars, now it's three stars. Now I want it to be less than or equal to one star. You know, everything is working as I want it to. Uh, let's put this back to uh, equal one star. Okay, so this is great. However, in 2024, I have to mouse up to the top of the screen and then move my eyes back down. So it, it's not as intuitive. Uh, I personally don't like this uh, breadcrumbs that they, they introduced. It's not useful to me and it's very slow. It's not really responsive. I click like twice, three times, nothing's happening. Uh, so I'm not a fan of that. I would like to be able to disable that and return the simple search down here. Um, the next thing is also related to search. Now we have the complete search up here. And I actually kind of like this over the advanced search in on one 2023 but there is a couple of things one at least one thing missing that i want to address okay so if i go into 2023 and i hit Control f to pull up the advanced search and uh, come on oh uh, okay so hold on there it is uh number 2023 is a little bit slow it's a pop-up now not a big fan of the whole pop-up thing, which is why I like 2024, where it's just baked right into the panel there at the top. But what we have here that is better is if I add a field and I go to ratings, there's more options. I have is, is not, is greater than or equal to, is less than or equal to, is greater than, is less than, is in the range. I, I really like in the range because I can filter by two to three stars. And I can see 
only the two and three stars. In On1 2024, if I go into Attributes, and I've got these stars, I only got these three options, equal, less than, or greater than. It doesn't give me every option that was available in On1 2023. Uh, another inconsistency, inconsistency I found is if I go here and I add text, I get one text attribute that I can add. So let's say I want to search for keywords and I want to search for uh, birds. Okay, I can't add another keyword, but if I go to metadata and then I go to keywords and then I want to search for um, bird, contains bird. Okay, now it's all down to, to bird. I could add another keyword and let's go to keyword and I'll change it to black and white, black and white. And there's no results. So this text tab feels like it's not useful. Why not just go to metadata where I can add multiples? So I think there's some inconsistency here. I like the idea of the text tab, but it really should also give you the exact same option to add more than one field. Okay, so that's the, the text tabs. Um, let's move in to the develop module. So let's uh, talk about the develop module now. And I'm here in the develop module and this is 2024, right? So, no, we're not in develop here. So I'm gonna hit D, I'm gonna go into develop. And now I'm in develop. I'm gonna to go to the local tab. I'm gonna to go to the local tab. I'm gonna add a new adjustment. And I'm gonna hit the brush key. And I've now got this showing up automatically. And I complained about this in my previous UX video. If you want this to never hide, go into window, uh, oh, sorry, view auto hide tool option bar and uncheck that. And then this will, the toolbar will always be there no matter what editing tool that you're using. Okay. so. One of the things that I was missing is the flow. So here we've got all our toolbar options for the brush, so when you're masking and things like that. But if I go into 2023, and I also um, go into locals, and I hit my brush tool, I've got flow right here. And the tools, the toolbar is centered in the image so that it's easier to get to it. I don't have to go all the way across to the left. But in 2024, on top of having this ridiculous pop up, I have to go all the way over to the left when all of my other editing tools are on the right. This should be centered or right aligned, not left aligned. It's just ridiculous. In any case, the flow option is not here. And to find the flow where flow went or if it was removed for some reason, I had to go into the uh, PDF manual and I discovered that it's hidden here behind this brush icon. And there's no tooltip, no indication that this is anything other than a brush. All of the other brush options are right here. Why is the flow option missing? Well, I have to open this up and then there we go. Size, size, feather, feather, opacity, 
opacity, opacity, flow, no flow, angle, also no angle. I don't use the angle very much, but I can imagine somebody who does use it regularly will be wondering where it is. Now you know. Okay, so the shape icon here, honestly, put all of the properties in the toolbar, and then the shape is what should appear when I click on the brush. So in any case, I think that is one big improvement that needs to be done. And also, today I was on Facebook and I saw somebody posting in one of the On One photo groups and they were asking with a screenshot, where is the color picker in the masking tool? And I responded that, oh, you got to click this. It's hidden by default and it's not obvious that this opens. Even if I turn it on, I can see the change, but I don't see the color picker. I have to open it here and then get my color picker. There, honestly, these UX changes are really frustrating because they've moved and hidden things around. And there's a lot of things that are not intuitive. I really feel like it was a step backwards, these UX changes. Now, I love On One. Don't get me wrong. I love the speed updates. Brilliance AI is interesting. I'm not entirely sold on it, but I, I think it's a great starting point for some photos. And I'm going to keep playing with it until I figure out what works for me. The UX changes are frustrating, and I hope that they get addressed in, point, in the 2024.1 update whenever that gets released. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.